Hi, I am Taiwan Kim, and my project is about portfolio optimization using deep reinforcement learning. First, the objective and the background. The aim of this project is to examine a realistic and useful portfolio optimization model using reinforcement learning. What I mean by realistic is considering real-world constraints like transaction costs. Also, useful models should be profitable as well as safe. Portfolio optimization here means to make a good combination of assets to maximize its return and minimize its risk. There are many traditional theories about this. According to Markowitz's theory, if we set the mean of return as expected return and its standard deviation as the risk, the optimal portfolios can be represented on this red line called the efficient frontier. However, majority of the theories do not work well in reality because of the constraints like commission fees and slippage. Slippage here means the price difference between what we enter to buy or sell and what we really got at the end in trading due to the lack of liquidity. There are previous studies regarding portfolio optimization and they can be categorized into three groups. Some of them optimize portfolio based on the prediction of asset price, but it might not be an optimal solution because minimizing the prediction loss is not always the same as the optimizing portfolio. That needs sequential decision with complex constraints. So another group work with reinforcement learning, but this time with discrete action space. Discrete action here means buy, hold, or sell specific number of assets, but it also has a limitation to represent all the possible combinations of assets. The last group, actually they are very well designed studies, but most of them also have limitation. They have two simplified assumption that ignores commission fee or slippage. Then what is reinforcement learning? We can say that it's a solution for sequential decision-making problems like video games, robot walking, or portfolio optimization, which can be hardly solvable by general supervised learning. In reinforcement learning settings, there are an agent and an environment. The agent decides actions based on the current state. Then the state of the environment changes by the action, providing the reward to the agent in response. In many cases of reinforcement learning, there are two factors in the agent. Actor and critic. The actor is the one who makes a decision of action, and the critic evaluates the action by calculating the expected cumulative reward. In portfolio optimization problem, the action can be defined as the proportion of each of assets to be invested. It can be generalized to large-scale portfolios, which is difficult with discrete actions like this figure. If the trading volume is confined to small numbers, this kind of actions will work. But what if it's like tens of thousands of assets? It's not scalable. About reward, for useful and realistic models, it should be adjusted with risk, and also the transaction costs should be deducted from it. Since we cannot fully understand underlying financial state 
just by the current observation. We use historical data like prices and trading volumes. Now we will see the proposed model in this project called DPG-RGT, which stands for Deterministic Policy Gradient with 2D Relative Attentional Gated Transformer. There are several challenges in portfolio optimization using reinforcement learning. It should have continuous action space and it learns very slowly without high performance devices. The partial observability of financial state can also be a problem when the length of the data is so long that even LSTM cannot perform well. Also, reinforcement learning is sometimes very hard to converge. And lastly, the data has three dimension, time, assets, and features, whereas usual time series prediction data has just two dimension. To solve these problems, we used these components, Deep Deterministic Policy Gradient, in short, DDPG for Continuous Action Space, and asynchronous training to make it faster. Transformer for the historical data with some tweaks for the stability. Finally, 2D relative positional encoding were adopted for the three-dimensional data. We will see these in detail one by one. First, Deep deterministic policy gradient is one type of reinforcement learning, which uses a deep neural network as its policy function approximator. And it returns deterministic continuous actions rather than probability distribution over possible actions. Also, to accelerate the training procedure, asynchronous episodic training were used. Transformer is one of the greatest inventions in NLP area, which brought state-of-the-art performance in many studies. It is particularly robust to long-term dependency by using multi-head attention and positional encoding mechanism, which makes them suitable for the partial observable reinforcement learning. But the problem is, Transformer does not converge well in reinforcement learning. However, according to this study, just changing the place of the layer normalization and using GRU-like gating layer make Transformer learn stably in reinforcement learning. These tricks are applied to our model too. Finally, while the original positional encoding in Transformer is for informing sequential information of the data, relative distance between each pair of data elements can be also informative. Previous studies examined relative attention using learnable relative position embedding and showed its effectiveness in motion translation and music scoring. We used this notion for understanding the structure of our three-dimensional data, where the both of locations of time and assets are important to decide the action. With all this combined, this is the overall architecture of the proposed model. The whole flows cannot be explained in detail in this short presentation, but it essentially follows DDPG framework for continuous action and uses multi-thread episodic simulators for fast training. A pairs of target actor and target critic and the replay buffer 
make the agent to learn more easily. Actor and target actor are neural networks with the same structure. Also, critic and target critic are the same. The core parts of these are RG transformers, which is 2D relative attentional gated transformer. This is the actor networks. The depth of the data is transformed by the first dense layer while maintaining the time and asset axis. After sequential position encoding, it goes through RG transformer. As you can see, the layer normalization were reordered and the residual connections were replaced by gating layer for stable learning. In 2D relative positional multi-head attention, two relative encodings, length and height encoding were applied for time and assets respectively. After this, the data is transformed again into the size of assets to represent the proportion of each asset. The critic is very similar to actor networks, as you can see here, except accepting action as an additional input and outputting a scalar value which is the expected cumulative reward. With this model, we had an experiment to verify it. The data are nine assets of representative Dow Jones companies. Their open, high, low, and close prices and trading volume data were collected from Yahoo Finance. We trained the model with the data from year 2000 to 2017 and tested the model with data from 2018 to April of 2020. For the observations of state, we used 50 days of historical data, which are log differenced for the stationary time series. Since the financial state is not really affected by the action in the test, we put past action additionally to the observation too. The maximum days were limited to 50 days in one episode, unless the portfolio value goes down to zero before it. For the risk-adjusted return metric, we used Sortino ratio as a reward, which is a variation of sharp ratio. Simply saying, it is the expected return divided by the standard deviation of negative returns. To make the test realistic, we set the transaction fee to conservative level of 20 basis points of the trading prices and set slippage to the half of the bid ask spread. Bid ask spread means the difference between the lowest offering price and the highest bidding price. As the spread are not provided by Yahoo Finance, it was estimated according to this formula using the high, low, and closing prices. The result is shown in the graph and the table here. This steep drop around March of 2020 comes from the outbreak of COVID-19, which made a huge negative impact on the portfolio values. In spite of the drop, our model DPGRGT outperformed all the other models in terms of cumulative return and annualized sharp ratio. Just using transformer doesn't really make a difference from vanilla DDPG. Gated transformer or transformer with 2D relative attention made better results. However, 
putting them all together brought the best result as you can see here. Finally, this is the conclusion of the project. As far as I know, this is the first to apply transformer and reimbursement learning for portfolio optimization. Also, it showed the effectiveness in the experiment when used with gating layers and 2D relative attention mechanism. Also, the reward was risk adjusted for profitable and risk aware model and transaction fees and slippage were also considered, which made it more realistic. For the future works, using the tension weights from Transformer, we can interpret the model, which can make the model more trustable. Also, the data used in the test were limited to nine assets, a massive test using various types of assets can be also possible with a multi-GPU environment. This is the end of the presentation. Thank you for listening.